Hello guys, uh, I'm going to be doing a little review here for Inflammation. Um, so for you guys that are interested, um, this is going to be the first part of Inflammation. I'm going to be doing Chronic Inflammation and Acute Inflammation. And this happens to be the Acute Inflammation. Um, so basically I want to define what Inflammation is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just remember that Inflammation is a protective response uh, for, those, for the ultimate goal is basically to remove the organism of both the initial cause of cell injury, uh, it can either be microbes and toxins, and the consequences of such injury, uh, the necrotic cells in the tissues, right? Remember that the inflammatory response is combined with the process of repair. Okay. That is important to remember because inflammation helps to destroy and dilute or, dilute the, or wall off the injurious agents and sets into the emotion uh, the serious events that lead to the reconstruction and the healing of the damaged tissues. So remember that the, the repair begins during the early phase of inflammation, but reaches completion usually after the injury's influences has been neutralized. Okay, <clears throat> and during uh, during the repair process, we observe the replacement of um, the destroyed tissues by the process of regeneration of native parenchymal cells or by filling the defects by uh, fibroblastic tissue, which is also known as scarring. So um, let, let me give you guys an example of uh, harmful effects of inflammation and repair. So remember that the life-threatening uh, hypersensitivity reactions to insect bites, uh, drugs, and toxins, as well as some common chronic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, atherosclerosis, and drug fibrosis can occur. And also the repair by fibrosis leads to scars uh, and fibrous bands which cause uh, intestinal obstruction or limits the mobility of the joints. So um, if you, you see here, um, I provide you guys a picture. Uh, you see in uh, A, picture A and picture B. Picture A is basically a fibro, um, fibrotic tissue uh, due to uh, a considerable damage on the front frontal pectoral region on the patient's uh, right pectoral down to his uh, abdominal gastral, abdominal pelvic region. On picture B, we see a growth of tissue, uh, fibrotic development on his ear, on his left um, posterior lobe. So basically, um, I define. I'm going to also show you guys this interesting picture here, uh, of the types of macrophages and um, <clears throat> the different components of an acute and acute uh, and chronic inflammatory responses. Uh, so in this graph that I'm showing you you see that there's three layers. There is the connective tissue layer, which is uh, observed in the superior region, and there is the vessels itself, and the, uh, and the inferior region is the connective tissue matrix. So you notice that in the connective tissue uh, layer, it is composed of three major um, cells. It's the mast cell, the fibroblast to its right, and the macrophage. And inside the vessels, in, underneath the smooth muscle itself, we observe that not only is there the, the vessels, uh, the endothelium, we see the polymorphonucleate leukocyte, we observe uh, the lymphocyte, we observe the platelets, the monocyte, the different types of clotting factors and kinogens and complemental components, and uh, we also observe eosinophils and basophils. And underneath the connective tissue matrix, we observe the elastic fibers and the collagen fibers and the uh, proteoglycans. So that's an interesting thing. And remember that uh, basically whenever you in refer to an inflammation, it always ends in the suffix of itis. An example, uh, let's say an inflammation in the appendix will be called appendicitis, right? Uh, inflammation of the pancreas will be called pancreatitis. Uh, inflammation in the meninges will be called meningitis. Inflammation of the pericardium, which is basically the heart region in between the two lungs, the pleural space of the lungs, this will be called pericarditis. Uh, inflammation of the liver will be called hepatitis, and inflammation of the joints will be called arthritis. So that's just basically a basic medical terminology referring to inflammation. <clears throat> and I, I want to remind you guys that you should never confuse inflammation with infection, because infection is not synonymous with inflammation. Infection refers to the tissue invasion by, by an infectious organism, which usually, note the key, to, note, note the key word here, usually results in inflammation. Remember that. So inflammation can have both infectious as well as non-infectious causes. And an example of non-infectious causes of inflammation is autoimmune reactions, toxins, chemicals, and physical agents. Okay? 
So um, now let's go into the main topic here, which is basically acute inflammation. What is acute inflammation, you ask? Okay, so I'm going to define what acute inflammation is. Remember this, okay? Remember this. And acute inflammation is a short duration uh, inflammation which lasts for minutes and several hours to even a few days, okay? We observe the exudation of fluid and plasma proteins, remember, which is basically just edema. We observe the emigration of leukocytes, predominantly the neutrophils. And uh, we observe exudative uh, inflammatory reaction. We observe increased perfusion due to hyperemia. We uh, the reason for this is to rapidly remove the noxious agents from the site. We observe exudation uh, of the dilute, uh, to dilute the noxious agents and uh, elimination of the pathogens by process of phagocytosis, which are complemented and completed by the macrophage cells. Um, so, yes, so, okay, so you, you might want to ask yourself, well, what causes acute inflammation? You know, we understand what acute, acute inflammation is, but what causes it? All right, well, I'm going to give you the reasons, the stimuli for acute, for acute inflammation. So this, the, they can be either infectious uh, due to trauma, due to physical and chemical agents, uh, due to tissue necrosis, due to, to, to uh, foreign bodies, or even immune reactions. An example of infections is bacterial, viral, and parasitic. Example of trauma causes is blunt and penetrating trauma. Example of physical and chemical agents is thermal injuries, uh, irradiation, etc. An example of uh, tissue necrosis is basically when you have a lack of blood supply and, uh, to, let's say, your uh, your scaly muscle. So that causes a tissue, ne tissue necrosis will cause inflammation. Uh, and one cause, an example of foreign bodies is a splinter, dirt, suture. Another, uh, an example of uh, immune reactions is hypersensitivity and uh, and said reactions. So that that causes the uh, you know acute stimuli, acute reaction stimuli. Um, so we observe that uh, there are five cardinal signs of inflammation. Okay five cardinal signs of inflammation. It's going to be ruber, tumor, calor, dolor, and functio lasse. Ruber for basically for redness, tumor for swelling, calor for heat, dolor for pain, and functio lasse, which is Latin for loss of function. And these are the five cardinal signs. Remember, heat, redness, swelling, pain, and loss of function. And, uh, you know, you, an example here, this picture here is uh, basically uh, ruber and also tumor. You see ruber because it's red inflammation, uh, tumor because you see the enlargements of the affected region due to the activity of the histones and the um, leukocytes, and clearly due to this redness, it's going to be hot. That's why it's called calor. Um, so uh, the that completes the basics of acute inflammation. Uh, so yes. Join me again for uh, another lecture for um, chronic inflammation, which I will upload in a couple of a uh, couple of hours from now. Um, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to post, uh, ask a question, whatever. Rate, subscribe, anything. Have a nice day. Bye.